Hello, everyone. My name is Qing Tsai Wang from Alibaba Cloud. Today, my colleague Jun Bao and I will give our talk about the large scale practice of resistant memory in Alibaba Cloud on Kubernetes. This is our profile. You can contact us through GitHub or email. This is our this is the agenda of today's topic. In the first part, I will introduce the system architecture of PMAM stack. The second part, we will introduce the practice of PMAM stack used in our company. And the third is the demo. And the fourth is the other related works about PMAM. So why is persistence memory? Persistence memory is a higher performance by addressable memory device. Being on the memory bus alone, P memory has the memory DRAM like access to data. And uh, persistence memory has the following features. The first one is data persistence and uh, the third, the second, the, third, the second is higher performance and the large capacity and the low price. And uh, why we use the uh, P memory, P memory in our company? Uh, it is the first is cache database needs large capacity memory space. And the second is large, uh, we want to save our cost. And uh, then let's say the necessary of using PMAP in Kubernetes. PMAP is uh, typically used as file system volume to application, which can be provided as uh, persistence volume with CSI. First, containerized. More application I containerized in currently. Many payloads I deployment on Kubernetes platform and use the storage resource as volumes. So PMAP used in container becomes more and more requirements. Secondly, automatic. A Kubernetes manage PMAP device automatic with the Kubernetes customized controller. PMAP can be initialized as a defined policy. And also PMAP device can be provided as namespace and a fail system automatic. Thirdly, PMAP can provide more than TB capacity on one node. So resource sharing is necessary between different users. So the resource limit is requirements in the production. And then is the capacity aware. Capacity on a single node is limited. So we need to report the resource capacity of the node to the scheduler. Scheduler will determine the location of the new port based on the capacity of the PMAP in the entire cluster. This is, our, this is the architecture of PMAP stack. That's the stack with the architecture diagram on the right. At the bottom of the graph is node resource manager. Node resource manager is responsible for automatic initialized PMAP device and it also formats the device and mount it as a fuel system, which can be used as directly by its access by application. And uh, node resource manager is deployed as demo set and works on each node in the cluster. It also reports the node resource capacity, which can be used by scheduler. Then is the uh, CS layer. As we mentioned, PMAP can be used as storage to application. So we can manage it using CSI plugin in Kubernetes. 
PMAP will be used as persistence volume and can be managed by Kubernetes volume system. And through CSI component, PMAP is formatted as ext4 file system will project quota feature enable. And we also provide volume provision, volume mount, volume capacity resize, and volume monitor. Full CSI feature is implemented. Above CSI layer, we provide scheduler plugin and auto resizer component. With auto resizer, the PMAP volume can be extended according to the capacity usage. The PMAP volume can be extended according to the capacity usage and with scheduler extender, we resize capacity awareness of PMAP resource at the top of the graph. There are some CRD or config map which are used to record capacity information or define PMAP resource topology. And then last week, look at the detailed implementation of the node resource manager. Node resource manager returns on every node of the cluster and watches the config map which defines the PMAP resource topology. In node resource manager, print out the PMAP definition on this node. It will start to check PMAP device and guarantee the and generate the target namespace. Node resource manager consider device as storage and format it to fill system. Application use PMAP with project quotas fill system. So node resource manager will enable the quota filter on the ext4 fill system and also enable the DAX feature. Node resource manager records the node resource capacity to node resource uh, the CRD for each node. The node resource CR will be created for every node in the cluster. If there are more than one project quota fill system in one node, they will be recorded in the same node resource CR. Node resource topology defines the PMAP resource planning in each node. There is an example of the definition. Name means the fill system directory on the node. And the key and the operator and the value is used to match a target node. If one node is match the key value, it will follow the define PMAP policy. Topology, define the resource planning. It defines the resource type, format op options, and uh, PMAP regions. With node resource manager, the PMAP stack implements initialize resource automatic and uh, resource capacity reporting. And then let's introduce the PMAM CSI. PMAM stack implements the four CSI features for PMAM type volume. Unlike distributed fill system, PMAM resource is the local resource on the node. So the provision glitch operations will be executed through gRPC. Volume provision, CSI controller will uh, is, res is responsible for creating volume. It calls gRPC to the remote server on CSI agent side. Volume provision is only support in the lazy bounding. We set the volume bounding mode as wait for first consumer. Volume delete with gRPC call. CSI controller will remove all the fields under the subpass, which is related to the PMAP volume. If you don't want to remove the data, you can set the reclaim policy as re re return. Volume resize. 
if the volume capacity does not meet requirements, you will want to expand the capacity with PMAM CSI. You just resize the PMAM, resize the PVC size, and the system will expand the capacity automatic. Next. Let me introduce the volume auto resize cyber system. We have introduced the volume online resize in the PMAM CSI part, but the only online resize is not enough in the production cluster. Automatic resize one volume capacity when the current usage is in the emergency. So we develop the auto resize controller. First, introduce the auto resize policy. It is designed as a CRD, which defines the resize policy for the PVCs. It can be defined when which volume apply to a policy and when one volume need needs to expand the capacity. The policy supports the critical volume of size of the percentage. Then uh, let me introduce how to implement uh, scheduling to use PMAM more reasonable and efficiently. Our implementation is based on the scheduling framework. The scheduling framework is a black wall architecture for the Kubernetes scheduler. It adds a new set of plugin APIs to the existing scheduler. The scheduling framework defines a few extension points. At the same time, we have also implemented some strategies in the big data and AI through the scheduling framework, such as the Gauss scheduling and the elastic quota of capacity scheduling. These functions are open source in the scheduling a scheduler plugin project on GitHub. Welcome to try them. Then let me introduce the plugins for capacity scheduling. There is a true selection policy in capacity scheduling. First, we allocate pod request to the same region based on capacity. Second, when some when we choose the region, we will use beanpack strategy to give the priority to the region which with the lowest remaining amount so that they can meet the pod with large resource requests in the future. For capacity scheduling, we mainly implement the following four extension points. Filter, filter out the nodes that can't meet the requirement of PMAM. Score, select the optimal PMAM scheduling result by algorithm. Reserve, reserve the optimal PMAM scheduling result to prevent reallocation to other ports. And if failure occurs in the bonding cycle, it will clean the PMAM scheduling result pre-bound, update the PMAM scheduling result to the annotation of the PVC. And then we will introduce the new malware scheduling. Because CPUs located in different NUMA nodes have different delays, to, to access the PMAM of different uh, sockets. So we will have the following scheduling policies based on NUMA node. First, try to allocate the CPU of the same NUMA node to reduce the switching of applications across NUMA nodes. Second, select the combination of PMAM and the CPU with the shortest distance. Similar to capacity scheduling, we also implement four extension points in human aware scheduling. Filter, filter out a node that can't meet the requirement 
of the port for CPU score select a combination of PMAM of CPU and CPU with the shortest distance. Resolve also resolves the optimal CPU scheduling result to prevent reallocation to other ports. And if failure occurs, it also will clean the result. The fourth is the prebound, and uh, it will create a post C groups request. It is a CRD to store the CPU scheduling result. And if you want to know more about the CPU scheduling, you can click the link below. It uh, will introduce the more details. So this is all the all of the cloud native PMAM stack introduction. The following content will be introduced by my colleagues Jun Bao. Please welcome. In the second part, I will introduce the practice of PMAM device used in Alibaba Cloud. Let's take a look at how Redis is used on persistent memory stack. As the left graph shows, the persistent memory device is formatted as DX file system, and Redis access persistent memory device with direct IO by MF system call. For the write operation, Redis writes data directly to DRAM, and Redis also writes data to persistent memory until the write operation retains successful. For the read for the read operation, difference process logic is applied to give uh, business data and uh, metadata. For metadata, Redis read from DRAM, and if there is no data matched, Redis will read from past memory device and cache the data to DRAM as the hot data. For business data, Redis will, uh, will read the data directly from the past memory device. The right graph is an overall attacker. At the bottom layer is a personal memory and a better metal hardware resource provided by Alibaba Cloud. On top of the hardware is Alibaba Cloud Linux OS. And the past layer is a cloud native Kubernetes platform, which provides a number of extension plugins such as auto resizer, scheduler, sets plugin, and resource manager. On the top of the system, it is customized Redis engine and Redis applications. By running the business on PMAM stack, the Redis service achieves containerized deployment and automatic operations. Here is the benefit of using personal memory stack for the Redis service. In the old Redis system, because of the limitation of memory capacity, old Redis service can't meet the requirement of a large capacity cache system. Also, because of the high cost of memory, that is service cost remain high. And in the software architecture, all system is using both cache and storage resources. In the new system, personal memory source can provide a large Redis instance, which is important in large database service scenarios. We can style in a Redis instance online and get the following statics. In terms of performance compared to DRAM, persistent memory achieves 90% performance. And in terms of cost compared to DRAM, persistent memory achieves 70% cost. So the persistent memory source gets a good performance and cost benefit. And for the software architecture, in the older system, the architecture has three layers, which contains application, Redis catch and the persistent volume. In the new system, the architecture has only two layers, which contains applications and a Redis cluster, no need person volume. Then to see the Redis cluster itself plays both catching and data persistence. The third part is a demo. First, we will we should create a Kubernetes cluster from Alibaba Cloud SK service and add a node which contains, which contains nodes. 
we can see this task has four nodes and one node is key memory type. Okay, we can log, log in the P memory node. And find the amount of information by the, for the PMM. We can see there's no path mounted by the PMM device. And the PMM is on the DV path. There's no reason, there's two namespace PMM device. And step two, we will install the new resource manager and check the new resource manager what is running. Okay, our product is running, and then we will apply the config map and check the config map definition. Um, the config map uh, defined. Uh, the target node as the color path type, which means the device will format as ext4 path system with project quota enable, and is mounted to the path of mnt and path one. And the key operator and the value define the target node, which will follow this policy. Now we can check the target Pass is mounted to the PMM device on the node. Okay, the PMM device is mounted by the pass MNT pass one. Okay, the step three, we will check the set plugin install and install the third class. The set plugin is installed and the port is running. And we will apply the, we will check the third class. The third class defines the volume type as code pass, which is the same as the config map, and the load pass as MNT pass one, which is the same as the config map two. We apply the third class. And uh, Step two, we create a self set application with the PMM volume. In the self set, yeah, we can see the third class name is defined as Alibaba AliCloud PMM quota, which is uh, same as we created right now. Now we check the port, which is creating and is running now. We check the PVC. The PVC is created right now and the PV is also created. And we log in the port and check the mount point. We find the target path data is mounted by the persistent, mem persistent memory device. And the size is 3 GB, which is our expected. Okay, we resize the PVC with the application online. We change the size from 3 G to 4 G. And uh, we can find the PVC and TV size. PV has changed from 3G to 4G and the PVC is some slowly. And as last step, we can, uh, we can check, check the auto size controller features. We can find uh, the auto size controller is installed in our class after. The port is running. Okay, the PVC has uh, size finished. 
from 3G to 4G. And uh, we can check the order size policy. And the PVC selector uh, means it's defined which PVC will be watched by this policy. Uh, for example, this policy will watch the PVC which has a key APP and value index quota. And the conditions define the volume conditions which can trigger the actions. And suppose the free size type and the percentage type. Here is the free size type. It means if the free size is less than 2 GB, it will trigger the actions. And the actions define the, the volume upgrade actions. Uh, it can uh, contains more multi actions. And here is only contains one actions. And this actions defines the cup as volume expand. And uh, it will expand the volume uh, 2 GB every time. And the max size is 20 GB limitation. Okay, we apply the order size policy. Okay, and uh, we and then we copy data to the pod uh, target pod target path conditionally and check the capacity change. It will copy the uh, bus to the target pass. And I will check the volume change, volume capacity change. The capacity trade will going to be like this graph. As the use capacity grows and the volume is continually expanded. Okay. This is a demo. And the last part, last part is, uh, the last part is some related works on the personal memory. In addition to being used as a storage device, in addition to use, be used as a, as a storage device, Personal memory can be also be used directly as a memory device. We work on the memory mode of personal memory in following two scenarios. First, personal memory used as a template FS as a graph source. The, we format the personal memory device as DV, DX type, and add it as a NUMA node. Then CSR plugin will mount the personal memory NUMA node as a local volume by template FS and provide it to application with PVC and PV. The template FS volume can be dynamic provide and uh, mounted by CSR plugin. The Kubernetes can provide the whole life cycle management for the template FS volume. And it, it could be more monitored by promise and uh, resized by or resized controller. In this scenario, the personal memory device is used as High performance local storage. Secondly, personal memory can be used as memory cache. Some, same as the above scenario, format the personal memory device to DVDX type and add it as a human node. You can run the online application on DRAM. And if the, if the application begins to stop, the system can move the memory data from offline application to personal memory. When the offline application wakes up, the system can import the memory data from personal memory to DRAM immediately and start the application. In this scenario, personal memory device is used as a memory to cache the application data and speed up the application setup. And at last, I will introduce the field works related, to, related with the personal memory device. We will look forward to find more business scenarios to personal memory device. For example, in the big data area, we will do more effort on community store scheduling to en enhance the device performance and make the source pass between PMEM, DRAM, and CPUs. In the field of memory power, the personal memory can be used as a cheap memory source 
and we expect, expect to implement the memory dynamic provision in cognitive environments. Then we can attach memory instance whenever the port is running. And that's all my topics. Thank you very much.